So everyone welcome. So some of you have heard of this. It's a book, a booklet, uh, personal narratives about race and food co-ops. And this, uh, this is a project that was supported by CDS Consulting Co-op along with a lot of other co-ops. Oh my gosh, look, there's a picture of it. I don't need to hold on to it. Um, so this, uh, to start off my talk, I want to say a couple things is I'm going to be using some words like race or racism that we don't really have a shared terminology for. Um, I'm from that era where we weren't supposed to talk about it. So um, you might hear some words I say in a different way than I mean them. And so I just want to start off saying, I mean no harm. <laughs> so um, the other thing is to say, I understand that my perspective on the world may not be shared by folks here. And uh, that's cool. I've actually been learning through my co-op experience that we really are stronger together. And it's really sometimes really good for me to kind of be quiet and listen to what other people have to say so I can broaden my understanding. So a lot of this project came out of my own personal experience uh, in the co-op volunteering thing. I was a co-op consumer for most of my life. I lived in student co-ops. Um, I shopped at my local food co-op, which I was pretty infatuated with because I'm very into food. And um, it was during later in my life, well, 16 years I've been a volunteer. And actually, my co-op journey has been very challenging. Pause. So many of you have had challenging co-op journeys as well, I'm sure. There are moments when it's not easy. And so this, for me, came out of that process that I really saw that um, race had an element for me in some of the challenges. And it took me back on my way here. I was thinking how early in my life I became aware that my skin color and my facial features were going to have an impact on how my life was going to go. I think I was early elementary school, probably between around seven and eight, where I remember looking in the mirror and thinking, this is not good. So, <clears throat> so that with that also, I want to give a trigger warning. Um, I'm going to mention some things uh, that might be disturbing for people. So take care of yourself during lunch. Talk to a friend <laughs> if any of these. And the first one is um, the Supreme Court hearings that just happened in this last uh, couple of weeks. Um, I don't know about you, but many of my friends are kind of in a state of incredible distress as a result of what they saw. And what they saw, my interpretation, was that in our culture, unlike what I was taught in school, that the powerful can pretty much do with impunity what they want to to people that are less powerful. And when I see that sort of in you know, big lights, it's upsetting. Because even though you know, I learned it in school, I believed it, and even though I see again and again that it's not true, um, I, it's upsetting to see it in real life. So we live in a hierarchy, a hierarchical society. Uh, despite the Declaration of Independence, which states that um, all men are created equal. I really enjoy bringing up the quote from um, Animal Farm, which says, it's, this is a paraphrase, all men are created equal, but some men are more equal than others. So we know that we live, and I think we know that we live in a hierarchy like this, where we all get, we, we experience life differently based on where we are in that hierarchy. And each of us is in a hierarchy where there's somebody above us and there's somebody below us. And, and in our particular culture, that also means vulnerability to mistreatment that then you don't get justice for, right? It's not just a hierarchy. It's a hierarchy that says outcomes, often dictates outcomes. And what I wanted to, the reason I wanted to mention that is because that's the context that our co-ops exist in. That's our context. So when we walk in the store, we might want to believe that we're not in that world anymore, but most of the people who walk in the store, we're, we're living in that world. And some of us are more or less aware of it. So what is that? OK. Uh, so when Mark asked me to speak today, <laughs> one of the things he said was, I'd like to hear, you know, we want to hear your wisdom. You know, what have you learned uh, from doing this project? And the first thing that came to my mind was, um, I learned how little I really knew. <laughs> I, uh, I started this project thinking I had knew some stuff about race and racism. I was in my 50s, I'd been around, I had lots of experiences. I thought, we're going to um, interview folks who are involved in co-ops, and we're going to ask them their views about race, and then we're going to pick people, you know, white people and people who aren't white, and we're going to discover that the reason that co-ops are white is because of racism. 
And I was, you know, thought that's what we were going to discover, or I was going to discover. And what I discovered instead was, wow, <laughs> um, <clears throat> I didn't know that was the answer. It was way more complicated than that. And so if I was going to share my wisdom, it would be um, let go of what you think you know sometimes and uh, be curious. Um, I've learned that racism is a part of pretty much all of our lives every day, whether we're aware of it or not. Um, we, some of us have benefits or lack of benefits based on our skin color that we may not even attribute to that. But it impacts us in a culture and a, a society that's built on race. And the other thing I learned, um, besides I don't, know if, I don't know as much as I thought I did, and how important it is to be curious, is that uh, change, while it can be uncomfortable, like I've been really uncomfortable a lot in this journey. Um, I was, just to go back, I was a head in the sand person about race for a long time because I felt talking about it didn't really make any difference. But as I've been talking about it, um, I've found my life has been transformed, actually. I'm way more comfortable <laughs> talking to people about it. I feel like there's been some inner healing about some things I believed about it that now I understand are true. And um, these are things that have happened to me like in my lifetime. You know, a lot of stuff that we devote ourselves to to change, we don't see the change. But through working on race, I've been able to enjoy a better life, even though at times it's been difficult. So the reason I talk about this and about race in general, you know, I said I didn't talk about it for a long time because I didn't think there was anything I could do about it, is I think cooperation as a movement in itself is optimistic. I mean, we're basically taking on the big guys. <laughs> I mean, capitalism, right? We're trying to transform capitalism and trying to make humanizers and make it something that serves people and not profit. And so I think that that's optimistic. And that's why I think it's, that it's a great thing that we're doing this for. So I want to, um, for a long time, I had a quote from James Baldwin as my email signature. And it said, um, not everything that is faced can be changed, but nothing can be changed until it's faced. And so with that, I want to say I've been really excited to be part of watching co-ops start to face this complex issue that impacts us so profoundly. Well, um, I wanted to touch just a tiny bit on the cost of not facing race and racism. Because sometimes we think, oh, we're just like, let's just use diversity, let's talk about that. And I think the costs are um, that we, wouldn't, we won't necessarily change it if we're not aware of it. And so I just have a couple really quick closing comments. Recently, I was part of a conversation by Dr. Be Beverly Tatum. She wrote the book, Why Are All the Black Kids Sitting Together in the Cafeteria and Other Conversations? And she said, she goes a lot of places where people ask you know, this question, are you racist? Am I a racist? Are you racist? She says, that's not the question. The question is, are you actively working against racism? And so to leave you with Lao Tzu, I think his name, the Chinese philosopher, said the journey of a thousand miles starts with a single step. Um, stepping out of the video, sorry, Joel. I say, so this resource is available as a free download on, um, from the CBS Consulting Library, and there's a discussion, questions, and a study guide. And really, the idea is just to make it easier to have these conversations, because I think that's where uh, we need to start. And thank you. Okay.